Hi, I'm Steve from The Rooted Podcast, and I hope you can join me every weekday for a five-minute or less devotional word study or insight into Scripture to add to your day. Welcome to Fruit Snacks. Hey, everyone. In today's episode of Fruit Snacks, we're going to do a word study and maybe more like an anti-word study, (laughs) and I'll explain what I mean. So I saw on YouTube a few weeks ago a video being made as a reaction to something that a prominent worship leader in a very well-known church and band said during a worship session uh, at their church. And what she said was, and she was quoting Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, which in and of itself is a pretty obscure passage. I don't think most of us would know what that says off the top of our head. Now, the statement that was made by this worship leader during worship was that one of the Hebrew words in this verse means literally to twirl around in circles. And so, therefore, the application was that the congregation needed to engage in a time of literally spinning around in circles so that they could basically twirl twirl off their problems, twirl off their cares onto God. And I know that you may be thinking right now that, well, she's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, right? That that obviously can't be what what that term means or or something has been grossly mistranslated or taken out of context. Well, actually, what's really interesting is that she actually is technically correct. The Hebrew word for rejoice in the middle of this verse does have a connotation to it where it can mean to spin around basically under the influence of a strong emotion. So she's not completely wrong when she said it means to twirl around. It can mean that. And that and that's important because what was being said in that moment wasn't completely made up. I don't want to say that because that's not the case. The problem is that what this gal was doing is committing a fallacy in Bible interpretation that many of us are guilty of. I certainly have been in the past before I knew different. And the fallacy is applying one word's possible definition as the definition in a particular passage. And the temptation is to read through all of those possible definitions and just plug each of them into the verse and to try and get a different a different idea about what could that mean, almost like you're turning a diamond and you're seeing different facets of it. It sounds intriguing. It sounds like you're doing good Bible study when you do that. But the problem is possible definitions of a word don't determine the word's meaning in any particular verse. Context is what determines meaning, not your favorite possible definition. So while it's true that the word does in the Hebrew have that possible definition of twirling or spinning around, that doesn't mean that's what it means here. And there are other verses that use this Hebrew word like 1 Chronicles 16.31, Psalm 13.5, and Proverbs 24.17. But what you see when you look at those verses is that just like in Zephaniah, the intent of the author is to suggest joy and rejoicing, not physically spinning. People may jump up and down when they're really excited, but it would be a mistake to suggest that the English word excited means to jump up and down. It's the same thing here. So what's our takeaway from this? Well, for one, if you happen to find yourself in a position of considerable influence, whether you're a teacher, a leader of some kind, be very, very careful about what you say and about doing your due diligence to really understand how to do things like word studies and Bible study accurately and to work with foreign languages if you haven't been formally trained in them because people will listen to you. Whether you're right or wrong, people will listen to you. Second, it shows us that there is a lot of depth to these languages. And so it really is in our best interest to 
to do our best to understand the languages, the original languages, and the original contexts that produce scripture, because it is that context that determines meaning. And if we don't understand the culture, if we don't understand the language, then we really aren't going to understand all that is being communicated or intended in any given verse.